All right. Hey guys, what's up? It's Dean. Welcome to Manful Yoga. This is a scheduled live video, so I'm super excited to do this. Uh, we've already got 50 people watching. That's pretty cool. Um, let me uh, just go ahead and let me know that the sound is working. So say something. Say, hey, Dean, yes, the sound is on. Uh, I'll wait for some comments to show up. Uh, I have my wife here. She's going to be helping with this whole thing and making sure that uh, I'm in focus and things are going accordingly. So, um, so in this video, I am going to give you a tour of my home gym. And I say gym because I don't really have a gym. Um, what I do have, wifey, pregnant wifey, would you like to sit down on the couch? She doesn't want it. Okay. So what I do have, um, I don't have a home gym because I don't have a huge house. Um, and I now have a nursery, so I have even less room. Um, I do have my office here, though, and this is where I keep most of my exercise tools and equipment. I also have some stuff outside, so I'm going to walk uh, after we've done in here. I'm going to take you guys outside and show you um, what I have outside. And basically, this is um, – I do have some other pieces of equipment that I use at my office. So I also have an Olympic bar, um, and I have a squat rack at my office that I use. Um and a deadlift or a trap bar or a, um, a hexagonal bar, a hex bar. Um, so I do have some stuff there as well, but this uh, stuff that I'm about to show you is is uh, what I use for my home workouts. And this makes up usually, I'd say about 50 to, probably 50% of my workouts are home. And of course, for the last six weeks now, I have been doing all of my workouts from home. Um, and I've still been able to get pretty much exactly the workout that I want, minus some heavy squats and some heavy deadlifts. I'm still able to get a really good workout from all of this stuff. So I'm going to walk you through all this, all these things. All right. So first off, got the yoga mat, right? I'm a yoga person. Got to have my yoga mat. This is our cork yoga mat. We sell this on Amazon and also on the Manful Yoga website. Currently out of stock. We should have more in. Um, what's nice about this is it's thicker, it's longer, wider, and it has a cork surface. So it's non-slip. This is a really awesome tool. All right, moving into our heavier objects. So I have power blocks, these guys. Uh, power blocks, I really like. These are basically just dumbbells that are adjustable. I really like these because they don't take up a lot of space. Um, and you can use everything you need for a dumbbell, obviously. So um, the exercises that I mostly use um, with dumbbells, just because this is just kind of what I'm working on right now, I'll do overhead press, so I can do it seated, I can do it standing, I can do it single arm, I can do both at once. Um, I don't do curls, just because I do pull-ups and I have a climbing rope, which I'm going to show you guys in a bit. So I just don't need, um, I just don't need to do curls, because I'm getting biceps in other ways. Um, one thing that I do really like is bent over dumbbell row. So bent over dumbbell row, I want to keep my back flat. Bent over, one hand on the bench, other knee on the bench, back flat, and then I'm just pulling up here and slowly releasing down. This is really important because in yoga, we don't do a lot of pulling exercises, so you do have that shoulder imbalance that can cause pain and injury um, with too much pushing, so doing those pulling exercises are really important. Let's move on. So we've got my power blocks, and there are two of those. I just didn't bring them out. Let's move on to kettlebells. So I've got three sizes of kettlebells. Um, here's number one. I think this is like 30 pounds. So I have kettlebell number one, kettlebell number two, which is 45 pounds, and then kettlebell number three, ugh, which I think is like 65 pounds or maybe 62 pounds or something like that. Kettlebells, there are a ton of uses for kettlebells. Um, I personally don't use them for too many things. Um, I use them for kettlebell swings, and sometimes I'll hold on to them for front squats. So a swing, and if I'm not that good, I don't profess to be an expert, so don't critique me too hard here. Swings are great because they're a really great lower body workout. Lots of hamstring, lots of glute work, lots of core work. So... I'm going to use my lightweight here, but for the swing, I want to make sure my back is flat. 
I'm going to use my hips, kind of drive my hips down. And as I'm pushing my hips down, I'm allowing that momentum to bring the weight forward. So you can see that I'm keeping my neck in line with my back as I'm doing this. I want to make sure that I'm not doing something like this. It's also not a squat, right? So I want to keep my back flat. Again, not an expert here. There's probably much better kettlebell swingers, but that's what I do with the kettlebells. So for those, I'll do somewhere like a 15 to 25 reps, and I'll probably do anywhere from three to four sets um, if I'm doing a workout. I like to do circuit workouts at home. Um, that's just what I like doing. It doesn't mean that you can't do non-circuit workouts. That's just what I like to do at home. So kettlebells, what else? So we've got my yoga tools, I've got cork yoga blocks. Cork's better because they're heavier, more resistance. Um, it's just better if you want a more strength-focused workout. They're also more stable. So I've got cork blocks. I have these things called core flights. These are nice for um, doing hip work. So one thing that I'll do with these is close the window because the birds suck. Ugh. All right, window closed, birds off. So one thing I like doing with this, oh, by the way, I also have a bench. I found this at Costco, I think it was like 50 bucks. So I bought it. Um, the bench I use for seated things, um, I'll do a bench press on this. I'll do bent over rows, and that's pretty much it. So back to the core flights. So core flights are fun because they're good for – you can slide them on the ground. Mostly what I do with these are things like, uh, things like adductor strengtheners. Um, I'll do – what else do I do? I'll do abductor work. So I'll slide it out. You can start in a squat, come out, squeeze in, come out, squeeze in. You can also do it going back kind of into a lunge. So I'll do this and that's good for hamstrings and adductors. So I'll do those. That's most of what I do with core flights. Also a lot of glute work there. So that's most of what I'll do with those. You can also do things with your upper body with this. Um, I just don't do too much of that, so I'm not going to show it. So those are core flights. Other stuff. Resistance bands. And I'm actually going to take these outside and show you what I do with these. But resistance bands are really helpful for pulling exercises. Really good for your shoulders. Um, this is the thickest one I have. This is a green heavy. This is called a monster band. And then some of the thinner ones I have like this red guy, clearly thinner. So with the, the monster band, I'll do full pull down. So I'll basically do a lat pull down with this. I'll hook it onto a door, I'll hook it onto a fence post and do pulls. I'm gonna show you what that looks like in a bit. With these, with the smaller one, I'm gonna do things like scapular stability work. So do something like this, pull it out, pull my shoulder blades together. And this is really good for strengthening your shoulder blades. Again, with yoga, with body weight exercise, there's a lot of pushing, not a lot of pulling. This is really important to keeping your shoulders healthy. So I do a lot of this kind of stuff. Um, as far as the resistance bands go, that's most of what I do with resistance bands. There are a ton of other uses for them. I just don't do that much with them right now. Some other things that you can do, you can hook it into a door and you can do hip strengthening with it. So one way to do that, I'm going to get yelled at for putting this in the door and getting it stuck. Wife is right there. All right. So one thing that you could do, and this is way too thick for this, by the way, but something that you can do is you can work on hip strengthening, something like this. This is doing adductors. I can turn, do hamstrings. I can turn the other way and do abductors. So there's a lot of things that you can do. She's saying glutes, sorry. Um, so there's a lot, of, she's a physical therapist, by the way. So she's a lot smarter than I am. Um, but she hates being on camera. So anyways, so there's a lot of things you can do with resistance bands. 
that's the majority of what I do. And again, I'm going to take you out and show you my outdoor gym and my outdoor workout area and show you what else we can do with this. So we've got resistance bands, core flights, kettlebells. I have dumbbells. I have my bench. I've got my yoga equipment. I have some smaller weights here. I don't do too much with smaller weights. And there's not, and that's not to say that they're not beneficial, even for someone of my strength. Smaller weights are really helpful if you want to do specific, like light shoulder work. Um, if you're trying to do things that don't require as much, um, as much weight, a lot of people neglect smaller weights and they don't work on those smaller shoulder muscles. And that's a big mistake. So if you can work on, you know, if you want to work on like an L3 raise, something like this, um, if you want to get on the ground and do some light. So something like this, for example, where you're flat on your chest and we're doing some raises like this to something lighter, that kind of stuff is really good for your shoulders. Um, and you're going to need lighter weight for that. So I've got dumbbells, smaller dumbbells for that. And now we'll get into, uh, what else do we have here? All right. So we're going to get into my mobility tools. This is where it's going to get kind of, kind of fun. So you might have seen this before. This is a vibrating massage ball. It's pretty big. It's larger than a softball um, and significantly smaller, just a little bit larger than a softball, this thing. This is awesome um, because it helps with self-myofascial release, helps with muscle soreness, helps with getting muscles out. Uh, it's not charged, so I can't actually see, show you what it does, but this thing is awesome. I love this. I'm actually going to charge this now because I'll do it later, but I don't want to, I do want to use that again. Foam rollers. Everyone needs a foam roller. Um, foam rollers are not only good for self myofascial release for muscle recovery. Um, they speed up muscle recovery. They're great for doing after a workout. I've actually experimented with using foam rollers after a workout for the last couple of months before quarantine started. And I noticed that I recovered a lot more quickly, had a lot less soreness. So you should have a foam roller. It also doubles as a block. So if you're one of those people who's like, I don't have a block, I can't do yoga, use a foam roller. It's pretty much the same thing. So we've got foam rollers. Um, and then, uh, oh, a couple other things here. And I'm going to take these outside because I don't swing maces in the house. I typically use this for swinging. I don't do all the cool, like ninja, that stuff, uh, mace flows yet. Uh, I just haven't gotten into it. I use this mainly for swinging and I'll show you how I do that outside. And then the last thing that I have in here, I think it's the last thing is a body blade. This is cool for shoulder strengthening as well. Um, you can do a lot of different rotator cuff strengtheners with this. Um, you can do some other types of shoulder strengtheners. We're out here like this. We can come straight out in front. We can change the angle so that we're going side to side instead of up and down. Same thing out here. We can also come in here and do some rotator cuff specific work like this. I'm not too good at this yet. I just started doing this maybe a couple months ago. Um, so there's a lot of different things we can do with a body blade for shoulder strengthening. This is used in physical therapy a lot. Uh, I have a friend of mine who's a massage therapist who swears by this. Um, this is a pretty cool tool. So there. All right. So that's almost everything in here. I'm going to take you outside now. On the way out, we're going to show you a couple other things. Um, and yeah, we'll go through that. Okay. So this is going to be not super smooth. Camera is moving. Don't yell at me. Wife is holding camera. Pregnant wifey is holding camera. Say hello to pregnant wifey. All right. Before we go outside, I do have a pull-up bar in here. So pull-up bar, the one, I like this one. And if you can kind of see this one, it hooks onto the door a little bit differently than some of the other ones. It's very secure. I put on some padding here. So this is basically just a quarter inch thick pad that I put against the wall to protect the wall. That way I don't damage the frame at all. Um, for this, for the pull-up bar, I do pull-ups. So obviously you've got your basic pull up where your grip is pronated here. 
I like this because you can also do wide pull-ups, which is going to target your upper back more. And then we also have supinated grips, so chin-ups, right? So we can do this as well. And I'll try to do pull-ups or some variation of pull-ups twice per week. We also can do hanging leg raises. Aim it down. More. <laughs> so hanging leg raises, we can do knee to chest, right? We can also go legs all the way out like this. So we get hip flexors too. So there's a few ways to do that. I also like practicing, take it back a little bit. So I also like practicing kind of doing a Cobra on a pull-up bar. So by that, I'll really focus on extension in my body. So instead of bringing my legs in front of me, I'll actually bring my legs back and try to mimic a Cobra here. And that's pretty tough for your back, pretty tough for your posterior chain, your hamstrings, your glutes, all that. But it's a really nice way to work on muscle activation for the backside of your body. All right. Now we're going to go outside. Here we go. Hi, Tron. Tron's scared. Too much activity. All right. And then uh, I do have one more thing. It's dark in here. Don't come in here. Uh, so, hi, Tron. One other tool I like using, this is another foam roller. This is a vibrating foam roller. It just works a lot quickly and a lot more effectively than a normal foam roller. So this is awesome. Um, if I can turn it on, you'll see just kind of how angry it gets. This will shake your house. If you live in an apartment, you cannot have one of these because your neighbors will think that you're killing someone upstairs. So you can kind of hear it very loud, very intense, but super effective. Highly recommend this. Yes, it's expensive, but it's worth it. It's going to save you a ton of time. All right, here we go. Outside. Do you need to put your shoes on? Okay. I'm going to hold camera. Wifey's going to put her shoes on. All right. Hold that. I'm going to get the door for you. Come on, puppies. All righty. So here we are. We're outside. I don't know if we're going to lose you, by the way. Our Wi-Fi should extend. We'll see what happens. Okay. So here we go. So this is the outdoor area. So having a fence is great for your resistance bands. Come over here and then aim this way. So having a fence is great for resistance bands. So like I was saying before, I do different variations with here. Um, so for your heaviest band, you can do a pull down, a vertical pull down. So you can basically mimic a pull up or a lat pull down. Stand back more and then turn, yep. So lat pull down, I wanna get as straight as I can here. I'm gonna pull down. Woo, get my elbows at my sides, chest open, shoulder blades down. And I'll do anywhere from, usually anywhere from 15 to 25 of those, and I'll probably do three sets. So you've got that. I've got a thinner band. I've got a blue band that I'll use for horizontal rows, uh, just because I don't need as much resistance for that. But for that, I would go lower on the fence and I'm gonna pull like this, a little lower, aim lower, there we go. So I'm gonna pull here like this. You do need to make sure that your bands are level with one another, otherwise, other, otherwise one arm's gonna pull more than the other, but just, you know, we've got that. All right, and I'll also bring my weights outside, I'll bring my kettlebells outside. If it's nice out, which it usually is here in Austin, um, I'll bring it outside and do it here. All right, moving on. So now I'm gonna show you some of my out, more, out, more outdoor equipment. I've got the mace, which I brought. And here we have, there's the band I was talking about. So this is my thinner monster band. This is a blue medium band. This is great um, for doing horizontal rows. Um, one thing that I didn't do inside uh, these are, these teams seem kind of gimmicky, but the perfect push-up. I bought this probably when I was like 16. I still have them. These actually work really well for doing push-ups. Um, you've got the grip here, so it doesn't strain as, your, as much on your wrist. You do a little bit more forearm work. 
and it's a little easier on the shoulders. It's also more challenging uh, from a muscle building perspective. So I highly recommend perfect push-ups. I know they seem gimmicky, but I really like them. Um, and I find that I'm a lot, a lot sore when I use them as opposed to doing traditional push-ups. Also in here, I've got battle ropes. Honestly, I haven't used these more than five times. They're cool. I just haven't gotten into the habit of using them. And I'll do the things like, you know, where you see people going like this with the bands or doing slams. Um, and I use uh, this thing. So I'll anchor it to something. Um, I don't anchor it to my fence. I actually usually anchor it to my tractor tire. And that's what we're going to go see now. So here we go. Oh, I almost forgot. This is my freezer. So I have a freezer. I don't use it when it's <laughs> navigating camera work. We can actually, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to set this up now. So wifey doesn't have to hold as much. Wifey's pregnant. We have to minimize work. She is uh, seven months pregnant. Wait, more than that. She's at 30 weeks. So almost at 31. All right, cool. Now I've got stand. Pregnant wifey no longer has to hold stand. All right, so this is my freezer. I found this on Craigslist for 100 bucks. Bought it from a, a guy who sells ice cream. He had a bunch that he wasn't using. What I do with this, I fill it up with ice. Um, I get about 10 bags of ice. I fill it up. It only goes on for two hours a day. I turn it on from 4 a.m. to 6 a.m. And it stays cold for two weeks. It'll start out around 35 degrees. And it'll slowly creep up to 47, 48. Once it gets around 50, I'll empty the water, put in more ice. I don't use this unless it's summer. I find that I just have no desire to be in freezing water when it's cold outside. But when it hits summer and every day is 95, especially when we get into July, and it's literally 100 or 105 degrees every day, I use this every day. I love using this. So freezer. And you don't need to go in for two to four minutes for it to be effective. You don't have to stay in for like 20 minutes um, for it to work. I am not Wim Hof. All right, here we go. Last two pieces of equipment here. So we have ropes, rope, 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 uh, rope climb. This thing is fun. Um, it does take a lot of arm strength to be able to do. I wouldn't recommend doing this if you can't do a bunch of pull-ups already. Um, and it does put a lot of strain on your biceps. Um, when I first started it, I had to do a lot of buildup. I had to actually take a break, work on bicep curls, do some isometric strengthening for my biceps before I was able to do climbs. When I do this now, I'll only go up two or three times, and that's plenty. I'll be sore for days after that. We also have the tire, and the tire is super fun. So the tire, I found, um, I bought it again on Craigslist. I think I paid 50 bucks for it. And the tire is awesome for doing flips. You can also hit it with the mace. I can tie things to it and use it as an anchor. So if I want to do battle ropes, I'll tie it to the tire and just have it hold there. Um, I can do jumps on it. I can do step ups on it. Uh, it's a really versatile tool. And for 50 bucks, yes, it's big. Yes, you can't put it in your living room, but it's high. It's definitely worth it. So here's the tire. <laughs> All right, so here's my tire. And again, there are a few things I can do with said tire. Let's make sure I'm in here. Can you guys see the tire? Yes, tire is visible. All right, so with my tire, I can do a few things. I can do the swings, right? So I can stand somewhere here and swing straight down. I'll do about 10 of those per side. You can also do it from a side swing, right? So I can come down here and do that. And I'll do about 10 of those per side. We can also, and I hurt my foot in an unfortunate landscaping accident. My heel is bruised right now, so I'm not doing a ton of stuff lower body wise. But we can do step ups, 
right? So we can come up, step up. We could do a knee thrust or whatever that's going to be called. We can also do jumps, landing on my toes, and step down. If I do those, I usually do at least 15 or 20 per side. So that way I can get a nice cardio workout. I can get some explosive work in. And then we also have the tire flip. Uh, move back just a little bit, Marmar. So the tire flip is awesome. Too far. <laughs> so the tire flip is awesome for your lower body and for your core. Really good for your hamstrings. And it's tough to target your hamstrings that well without some heavy equipment. The tractor tire does a really good job of that. I find that if I only, I can do like maybe five or 10 of these. Beyond that, you don't need, I don't need to do too many. This tire, I think is 350 pounds. I want to say it's about 350 pounds. So it's pretty heavy. So for this, you want to make sure it's really important that you get the hinge correctly on this. If you lift with your back, it's going to be really painful. You're going to end up hurting yourself eventually. So you need to make sure that you get down, feel the tension in your hamstrings and your glutes, and then lift with your legs. I'm not just lifting with my arms and pushing it up. The power is coming from my lower body. So let's see here. I'll flip this way. We're playing around with camera angles. Let's do this. We'll aim down a little bit. Ugh, come on, camera. I'm oh, sorry, my. All right, we're going to flip it that way then. So here, I come down. I'm going to take my, I oh, no, I'm going to keep them on. Come down, hinge, right? See how low I get? And then I push from my hips, big exhale. And up. So I'll usually do about five to 10 of those per set. And uh, that's what my outdoor workouts will look like. So I'll do some tire flips. I'll do some swings with a mace. I'll do some pulling exercises with the bands. Um, I might do some overhead pressing, some bent over rows with the weights, um, some jump ups, some step ups. And that's pretty much what my home workout looks like. Um, we've had a lot of questions. Thank you, wifey. Say hello to pregnant wifey. She doesn't want to talk. She doesn't want to be on camera. She's getting used to her body. All right, so I'm moving off into the shade now. I'm going to scroll through and see if there's some questions that I can answer. One thing, one question that I did have from someone, um, does it make a difference? Should you work out at home or should you work out at the gym? Is there a big difference in the mentality? Um, I think that totally depends on, um, honestly, I think that totally depends on, on you. If you find that you can work out more intensely in a gym atmosphere, then great. If you find that you need that motivational atmosphere, cool. However, if you have, you know, if you don't like going to gyms, if you find it intimidating and you don't want to do that, then I wouldn't recommend going into gyms. Um, as for is one more intense than the other? No, um, it really, really isn't. Um, I don't think there's a huge, you know. I just don't think that's a huge factor. Sorry, this camera work is not going to be steady at all. We are, whoa, that went backwards. Um, we're moving inside now. So, guys, if you have questions right now, this is a good time to ask those questions. Ooh, excuse me. Thank you, wifey. All right, everyone say thank you, wifey, for helping Dean do his, for helping Dean do his broadcast. All righty, so let's make sure this goes down all the way. Okay, we're back into place here. Cool. All right, so I'm going to go through, uh, scroll through and just see. Hubby needs to say please and thank you to wifey. He does. You are very right. Thank you. I did say thank you. I didn't say please a lot. Sometimes I said please. All right, so let's go through and see if there's some questions here. Um... Let's see here. Gym and yoga. How do you balance? Uh, I do a bit more yoga than I do gym, but basically you can do one day yoga, one day gym. Pull up our brand. Um, I don't know what it is. I'll put it in the description of this video. Perfect push-ups, pull up bar, time to purchase again. 
please post a link to massage ball and massaging roller. Okay. Um, I've never seen a body blade before. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, it's again, I really like it for shoulders. Problem is weird or sound is weird. Okay. Uh, in two months, you won't have time to use all that equipment um, because you have a baby, LOL. So a lot of people have said this and I'll just address you because I'm going to call you out. Um, but there are so many people who think that I'm not going to stop working out because I have a child. My workouts are my values. Okay. So my exercise, my fitness is a value of mine. I'm not going to start, stop working out. There are many other things that I would sacrifice before working out, uh, when it comes to my life and the things that I do on a regular basis. So working out is part of who I am. Um, my fitness, my body, uh, my ability to do things is part of how I view myself. I'm not going to stop working out. So, uh, for all the people who did give up working out when they had a child, that's because you had different values than mine. Um, let's see here. Uh, Greetings from Poland. If I do cardio at all, I do. Oh, you know what? There is one more piece of equipment that I have. I forgot to show you my other um, piece of equipment. This is a super bougie. No, by the way, the super bougie. This is the most expensive piece of equipment I own. And I bought it as a present to myself after uh, the end of 2019. But I have a concept rower. So I put it here in the entryway. Wifey loves it. It's a beautiful decoration. Um, but yeah, if you've seen the concept rower, you've probably seen it. It's very popular in gyms. It's in pretty much every CrossFit studio or box, but I do have a concept rower as well. I use that for cardio. Um, but I also, the way that I do my strength training and my cardio workouts at and my, um, my circuit workouts at home. All right. My back. Sorry, guys. I think I lost you for a second. Uh, let me know if I, uh, if I, if I'm back. Anyway, so the Concept2, uh, yeah, so the Concept2 rower, I use that a lot for cardio. Some other cardio workouts that I do, most of what I do at home is kind of a cardio-like workout. So the way that I structure my circuit workouts, there is a cardio aspect to that. Um, so, you know, I'll do like one, ex I'll do an upper body exercise, then I'll do a lower body exercise, or maybe I'll do a pushing exercise, and then I'll do a pulling exercises. And I'll do that in rapid succession. I might take about 30 to 60 seconds rest between sets, but I'll keep that going for about 30 minutes, 30 to 45 minutes. And that helps me work on my cardio. Um, at other times, I'll go out in the backyard or I'll go to a nearby field and I'll do some dynamic sprint work. I'll do some, you know, some side shuffles. I'll do side shuffle to sprint. I'll do a jog to sprint. So I'll do things like that to help get my... Um, to help get my, uh, to help get my heart rate up. Um, someone just asked about cervical, what did you say? Cervical and thoracic spine. How do you decompress and improve cervical lordosis? So Nicholas, those are all ways of saying you have bad posture and you have bad sitting habits during the day. So you need to work on what you're doing during the day. Uh, first off, treat the cause or address the cause of that. Um, I think it's helpful to understand those terms, but if you term it like that, it makes it sound like you have something, um, that's wrong with you. That's treatable with the right exercises. And it is, but really the underlying cause of that is your lifestyle. It's what you're doing during the day. So you need to work on sitting with better posture. You need to work on moving more often. I have an entire blog on spinal decompression on my website. Go to manfullyyoga.com slash blog and search spinal decompression, and you'll find a lot of stuff on. It addresses every aspect of your spine. We've got one video on cervical. We've got one on thoracic, and we've got one on lumbar. So you're going to see all of that on that website, uh, manfullyyoga.com slash blog. Search for um, spinal decompression. We spent a lot of time putting that blog together. Definitely check that out. Um, how many days, uh, how many hours per day do you work out? I work out for less than an hour per day. Um, I am not one of these fitness influencers that does like three hours a day. Um, I don't have goals of being in the top 1% of fitness level. Um, I like, in I like working out, um, for fun. I like doing exercises that keep my body feeling strong and feeling good throughout the day. Um, but I am not one of these fitness influencers. I'm not a fitness influencer, first of all, because I actually create programs 
Um, I create programs. I'm an expert at yoga for men at yoga for fitness. Um, so my job is not making myself as fit as possible. Um, that's not what I do. My job is helping you learn yoga and helping you get the results of a fitness centric, uh, form of yoga. Um, so, um, I work out for about an hour a day. Sometimes I don't work out at all. Um, but usually I'll go for a walk every day. Usually I go for a 20 to 30 minute walk in the morning. I'll do some sort of movement, even if it's a really quick, if even it's a really quick stretching session, you know, I'll do like 10 to 30 minutes of stretching. And then I will try to do a more intense workout three to five times per week. It just depends on how I'm feeling that week. Um, what I have to do during the day, that kind of thing. Um, all right, let's go through some other questions. Thoughts on kettlebells? Yes, you missed that part. I do have kettlebells. I use them for swings. Um, watch back earlier in this video and you can check out what I see on. Um, um, hi, Dean. Any chance you could do your videos? Could you give metrics and measurements and metric as well? Oh, yeah, it's a good point. Um, so let's see here. I don't think I gave any weight for the dumbbells, but if you just divide pounds by 2.4 or 2.2, I think you're going to get the kilograms. Um, so kill the, uh, things that I have here, I have a 20 kilogram kettlebell. I have a, uh, maybe a 15 kilogram kettlebell. I have a 30 kilogram kettlebell. And then I have dumbbells that range from two kilograms up to about 28 kilograms. There you go. Metric math fun. Um, all right, cool. So let's see here. Um, yeah, that's pretty much most of the questions. This has been going on for 37 minutes. I don't want to take up any more of your time guys. If you like this video, like the video, hit the like button. Um, it's easy for you, but helpful for me. So hit the like button. If you've been watching this and you'd enjoyed it. Um, if you have any other questions, um, leave them in the comment section here. I'll get back to them. If you post them today, um, I'll get back to them, uh, as quickly as I can. I try to not live on, I don't live on my computer. Um, so I don't check every minute of every hour, uh, but I do check every few hours. So I'll be able to watch, see that and respond to your comments. If it's a good question, what weights are your light weights? Um, my light weights are as low as they get. They're like four kilograms. Um, or they're as low as three kilograms. I have eight pound dumbbells. I have 10 pound dumbbells. Um, so yeah, that's my light weight. Um, but I also have a five pound dumbbell. So if you really want to do, again, we talked about this before, but those smaller muscles in your shoulders that don't require as much weight, um, those are really important for keeping your shoulders healthy. If you're interested in lifting more weight and keeping your shoulders healthy and being able to continue to do this stuff, um, then, um, then definitely, um, definitely do those exercises. Um, all right. I've never seen a body blade before. Yep. Those are cool. Um, I am indeed taken. Yes. I'm very married, married, married AF. Um, I even have a cool ring to show for it. Um, all right, cool guys. So thanks for leaving Yoga workouts good for herniated disc. Yeah, check out my workout library and you're gonna look at my sciatica focused workouts. Um, you can also check out my bulletproof your back program. So herniated disc, you wanna avoid doing forward folds. That's the big thing. You wanna focus on doing back bends. You wanna focus on moving your spines, your spine in other ways that don't aggravate uh, your herniated disc. Um, the thing though is that you will your 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 spine will eventually fix itself. That herniated disc will go away, usually within a year. Um, so um, do what you can that doesn't hurt it. Definitely avoid forward folds, but you do want to continue to do core strengthening. You want to work on back bends if it's comfortable. You can do thoracic mobility or twist side to side. Um, so herniated disc again. Um, I also have a program for it called Bulletproof Your Back. You can see that program for phase one of that program is free on my website. You just go to manfulyoga.com slash bulletproof dash your dash back. All right. And if you guys have stuck along, uh, stuck around this long, um, I want to let you know we are doing 50% savings on all Manful Yoga apparel. So check out my website, shop.manfulyoga.com. 
look for the apparel section. Um, we're going to be doing, we're doing 50% savings on all apparel right now. So man, that includes a manful yoga tank tops, um, t-shirts, and we've got some other stuff on there as well. Um, so 50% savings, we only have limited stock. So we're actually, uh, we're trying to clear out all of our existing stock. We've, uh, we've, we're in the process and have already purchased a bunch of other um, Manful Yoga promo gear. So we've got water bottles coming. Uh, water bottles coming. We're going to be working on higher quality uh, workout T-shirts. Um, we are. We've also got workout journals coming, um, which are something that I highly recommend using um, to keep track of your fitness and make sure to hold yourself accountable. Um, yeah. So we're doing a sale to clear uh, clear our inventory to make room for all that new stuff. So 50% savings, no promo code required, shop.manfulyoga.com, 50% savings on apparel. Um, and yeah, we are finishing up week four of the Strength Foundations Challenge. I hope you're enjoying it. Um, it has been really cool to see everyone's comments and see how much stronger you're getting and how much you're learning from this program. So thank you so much. If you're part of that challenge, thank you for being part of the program. Thanks for being part of Manful Yoga. If you do want to join, if you want to get started with a Manful Yoga program, you want more workouts, go to manfulyoga.com slash join. All of the workouts and the content, the programs, the tutorials that I create, I add them to my members area. YouTube is where you can have some free samples, um, but uh, YouTube is where you can have some free samples, but all of my programs, all my workouts are on my website. Um, last question. No, this was all from memory, but I did have a good idea of what I wanted to do. Oh, you know what? I forgot. One more thing. I did want to tell you what my recommended equipment was. So if you don't have any of this stuff, what should you get? Um, so a few things I think you should get. Number one, a pull-up bar. Pull-up bar, because there are a lot of exercises that you can't do without a pull-up bar. Um, pulling exercises in particular. Get a pull-up bar. Get some resistance bands. Um, you can buy a set for like 20 bucks, and that way you can um, you can change the resistance anywhere from like two pounds all the way up to maybe 100 pounds. So get a resistance band set. Make sure that you're doing horizontal rows. Make sure that you're doing vertical rows. Uh, make sure that you're doing those shoulder strengtheners. Um, you'll find all of those in my Bulletproof Your Shoulders program. Again, that's part of the members area. I'd also recommend getting dumbbells. Um, they're smaller. Um, but they're really good for helping you build muscle. And you can use those for your lower body, your upper body, uh, core, arms, all that good stuff. So get some dumbbells. Obviously, you want to have a good yoga mat. The cork yoga mat that I create, uh, that I've created, is the best yoga mat on the market for men. Um, it's bigger, it's wider, it's thicker, uh, and it has just a little bit more cushion so you don't hurt your knees when you put your knees down on the mat. And it also has a non-slip cork surface. So it's out of stock. It will be back in soon. Also, make sure that you have cork yoga blocks. Again, not foam, but cork yoga blocks. Those are better for building strength, and they're also better because they're more uh, supportive. They're more stable. Um, aside from that, that's that's really those are the essentials. Um, beyond that, um, you know, you can get other stuff. But I'd highly recommend uh, you get some dumbbells you get some resistance bands, and you have a pull-up bar. That's going to help you get a really nice base to start with. Um, and beyond that, you can get some other stuff to make it fun. If you do want a recovery tool, I'd highly recommend getting a vibrating foam roller. It's called the Hyper Ice uh, from, um, oh no, it's called the Viper, and it's made by Hyper Ice. So I'd highly recommend a vibrating foam roller if you don't have one of those. Um, also make sure you have a lacrosse ball so that you can target smaller areas with self myofascial release. If you don't know how to use lacrosse balls or foam rollers, I do have a program for that called the self myofascial release series that is in the program section of the members area as well. So tons of stuff in there. Um, yeah. Um, resistance bands, you're going to want to have the, the bands that I kind of showed you. Uh, TheraBands we use for some of the stuff in the Strength Foundations workout uh, series and the Strength Foundations course. Those are um, those are just a different material. They're better for kind of the exercises we do in those programs. But as far as more full body exercises, um, like doing those pull downs, doing those rows, the the resistance band, the true resistance bands, not TheraBands, are going to be uh, helpful for that. All right, guys, so I've talked for 45 minutes now. You're probably bored of me. Um, 
thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to add some links in the description here. So you can, if you're looking for stuff, um, you'll be able to find that. Um, and I will see you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Um, and thank wifey for, um, yay wifey, uh, for, uh, for helping me film this. All right, guys, have a great weekend. Bye.